Hi everyone, this is Donald from UrbanSketchy.com. If you don't already know me, I am a sketch artist or an urban sketcher, as some people prefer to call it. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing a book. This book in question, Everyday Sketching and Drawing by a Seattle-based artist called Stephen Reddy. So I'll take you on a flick through the book and tell you what I think. This is a book that is slightly bigger than A4 and you can see one of his detailed artworks. And in this book he talks about his entire process of how he actually creates this from start to finish. So you can actually try and have a go in sketching in this way if you want to. He gives you all the techniques that he uses. And on the back there is some more of his really cool artworks. And there's a couple of quotes on the back as well here from Danny Gregory, the founder of Sketchbook School and of course one of the famous YouTubers, I'm sure you're familiar with them, and also Gabriel Campagnario, if that's how you pronounce it, founder of Urban Sketchers itself. The print price on the back there is US $24. I got it on Amazon UK for £15, so it's not too expensive. So you can see here one of his sketches in black and white. He uses a technique using bottled India ink that he waters down. It's a fascinating technique and I've had a go at it and it's really quite a challenge. But he does explain how you go do the process and you can see, this, I think this is his studio when he just sits and draws every single item detail in a kind of cartoony style, which is really quite similar to the way I like to draw. Not so much of a sketchy style, more of a solid line drawing style. There's some acknowledgements. And then we get into the chapters themselves. So there's 10 chapters and then some final thoughts and an afterword by Stephanie Bauer, who is another well-known sketcher. So the foreword is written by Gary Fagan, who is the co-founder and artistic director of Gage Academy of Art in Seattle, Washington, which is where Stephen Reddy teaches people how to draw exactly like this. So he's one of those artists who really does like to give back to people by teaching and he also does a course online at Craftsy which ties in really well with this book and his techniques. I really like the way that this book is laid out. It's got lots of big well-printed pictures in it so you really can see the detail and that's what I think one of his strengths is the volume of detail that he draws in his sketches. You have to see it big. Some of the pictures are small but the ones that are printed big you, you can just appreciate how much effort and concentration has gone into sitting drawing all the things that normally we would just ignore. So in the introduction it's really talking about his students at the Gage Academy and he was asking them why doesn't everybody draw all the time and he can't understand it because he's obsessed. He says he would rather draw than do anything else. I'd rather draw than finishing this sentence. He is completely obsessed. He literally draws every single day. I like how there's it shows pictures at different stages. So there's this one where he's just drawn the ink outlines and just look at the volume of detail. It's crazy. And then there's this one below it where he's showing you his India ink technique where he's drawn something like this and then he's painted over it with a watered down India ink and then left it as a black and white picture. He's got lots of stuff about his background, how he came to become an artist and how he got into drawing and sketching in sketchbooks as a kind of diary of his life. And he's actually got several self-published books that are more like journals and they can be bought on Etsy. And here's one of the interesting things about urban sketching is you would think urban sketching is cityscapes or drawing in a town or something, but here he is drawing a collection of shoes. He's got some shirts, a jumper. He, there's like nothing that he won't draw. He's just mad. He's completely obsessed. And here, this is one of the sections I really like. Um, it says drawing is a universal language that spans cultures, time and age. I think that's great. He's really trying to encourage everyone, no matter their ability. And he's saying that ability actually doesn't come into it. Everyone can draw. All you need to do is find the time to sit down and do it. And embracing mistakes is a big part of what he teaches. And if you look at this, he's not actually picking touristy scenes. He's picking completely every day, run-of-the-mill locations and just drawing everything he sees. So all the wires, the chairs and tables, the fences, lampposts, buildings, absolutely every single detail, even the tiny you know, leaf or something on the ground. So chapter one, after the introduction, the sketching habit 
There's always time to draw and it's really telling you about how you can find the time or why you should find the time to draw. And there's no excuse for not having the time because everyone does, according to him. And yeah, it's quite convincing, actually. And this is his own house that he drew. It's quite a fancy house. And this is the interesting thing because what he does is he draws it in permanent ink pen. Then he goes over it with India ink wash and then he paints watercolour over the top of that. So it's quite an intense, complicated process at first it seems but there's a logic to it and so actually you wouldn't know that there was a black and white image under this colour image that's the way he does it and it's really quite effective and it's more stuff about letting go of perfection embracing your mistakes it's really about enjoying the process of sketching which is so much how I like to think about things as well it's not about getting everything right just about getting as much down on the page and enjoying the time you spent doing it and again there's just a random scene a caravan and all the clutter that goes with it. He absolutely loves drawing clutter. In, in chapter two, about materials that he uses. So he uses a very particular type of sketchbook, which I did look into trying to find, but it doesn't seem to be available anymore, or at least it's not in the UK where I am. Maybe in America it's easier to get hold of, but it just tells you all the different pencils, erasers, drawing pens that he uses. And most importantly, this stuff, the bottled India ink that he drops a few drops into a little container of water, mixes it up and then uses different strengths and that's how he builds up the contrast. So this will take multiple layers of ink wash to get to this and then he goes over it with hatching. And he also uses white gel pen to go over some of the lines. Although I believe he's actually stopped doing that now but this is what he used to do for a long time. This chapter goes through his entire process in a five-step method and he calls it grey does the work, colour gets the credit. And here's a good example of it. So he's painted the whole thing in grey and then he paints over it in watercolour because once this is dry, it's permanent. It's not going to be removed so you can go over it again in watercolour. And he says he, he only takes two or three hours to create these, which I find absolutely mind-boggling. The amount of work, the amount of detail, and everything looks realistic, but sort of cartoony at the same time. Mad how he creates these. I absolutely love his style. So here you go, his five stages. It's a quick pencil thing, and he's really at pains to say that the first stage is not a drawing. It's a very quick marking of where things will go. Then the contour lines, which is the ink pen stage and this is where all the detail comes in and just like how I construct my images he starts at the foreground and works his way backwards. Then stage three which is tone and you can see here the different levels of shading that he uses and if you're interested in learning this technique as well as in the book it explains it all his Craftsy course, in fact there's two courses on Craftsy that he does, these are fantastic. You can learn so much from them and it ties into exactly to how he does the process here. He's got one that is a still life course and another one which is in a coffee shop. If you've never looked at these it's well worth going on to Craftsy, I'll put a link in the description. Then once he's done his ink stage he goes over it in watercolour and look at this, it's just, he's just picked a random spot in some industrial location and just drawn all of the buttons and bolts and everything else that he saw in front of him. It's just mind-boggling. Where do you start with something like that? His last stage of each image is hatching, which is dashy lines that he adds in just to create extra shading and contrast. Then some stuff about still life. And he goes through every stage of how to build it up. So it, re it really is an instructional book as much as just showing off his work. There's some stuff about what to do if you are a bit uncomfortable sketching on location and it's got some interesting advice like bringing a friend with you or wearing earphones or sit with your back to a wall so you don't have a person looking over your shoulder. Some good tips in there. And some stuff about how to choose your view when you're in a location and, and this picture here, this is one of the ones that he does in his course online, uh, the book bar. That's really cool and I did, I did have a go at this scene try, trying to draw what he draws and it's much harder than it looks. I mean it's, it's rare actually to get a sketcher who gives away that much information but he is a teacher so that's what he wants to do. Nothing's a secret. Then some stuff about sketching on location, how to draw houses, how to choose subjects. This was the cover on one of his own self-published books. And he's quite keen on limiting your 
colour palette as well. He doesn't go for lots of garish colours. I think that's something I'm guilty of when I do watercolour is I just do the most garish, vibrant colours like I'm in primary school. I don't know, that's what I enjoy doing. But he's got a very muted palette and it works well over the black and white. You get quite a grown-up feel to a cartoon image. And then chapter about clutter is great. You don't see that very often in a sketching book. And this is more about how he goes about constructing these crazy images. I mean, look at the volume of detail in there. So then there's a section on people sketching, which is not really something I do. I, don't, I cannot draw people. <laughs> Life drawing stuff. Drawing faces. A few celebrity sketches in there. Some stuff about travel drawing. Travel sketching. And then a few final thoughts just encouraging you to draw off and make sketching a habit and get better with everyone and then as i mentioned earlier there is a afterword by stephanie bauer one of the other famous sketchers and she also has a course on craftsy as well worth looking at and there we are that is everyday sketching and drawing by stephen reddy I would highly recommend this book. I think it's very well made. It's very well printed. There's so much useful information. The sketches are brilliant. And yeah, I would highly recommend you. I've got his craftsy course, which will tie in brilliantly with the book itself. So that's that. If you would like to see more of Stephen Reddy's work, you can visit his website as well, stephenreddy.com. And if you would like to check out more of my work, you can visit my website, urbansketchy.com. Or of course, you can subscribe to see more of my sketches and sketching demos. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you again next time.